All right, you guys. This is Ross the Fig Boss. Do you, have you ever seen anything like this? Off of a fig? I mean, this is just special, man. Uh, I had to film this. I opened it up this morning. I said to myself, I gotta be crazy not to get this on camera. No filter. No editing. This is really what it looks like. It's basically black on the inside. It's so purple that parts of it have turned black, especially down there at the bottom. I've seen this a few times in other fruits, this intense pigmentation. Um, typically, uh, Neruccio de Elba can get like this. You may see this in like uh, Aishia Black, UC Davis, or I have another fruit that I'm thinking may end up looking like this quite, quite often. But even this right here in front of me, I just don't typically see from this variety that often so far. I'm learning how to ripen the fruit. This is really a new fruit to me this year. And this is, as I said, it's called Black Celeste. And you can see my tree over here. And really, I think what has to happen is that although it might be blue like this and extremely attractive on the outside, it even has some cracking down there. I think in order to really get it to look like this, you just have to have some shriveling, some drying that is occurring in the fruit. Uh, and this may not even be consistent. I mean, this may be, you know, it happened the last fruit I picked off of this tree, but it maybe has something to do with the rain. I don't know. The current conditions I have, regardless if this doesn't happen again for me, or at least again all this year, this is really special. And it's so beautiful, this piece of fruit, that the only thing I can really compare it to in terms of beauty is something like a grape, a really well-ripened grape, or a really well-ripened plum. You can see the, the amazing bloom on the fruits. And then, of course, the intense colors. Here's a, an Everest seedless grape that's quite young that is ripening for me. And you can maybe compare the the beauty of that to the Black Celeste fig. It's by far my most beautiful piece of fruit. Uh, more beautiful than the grapes I ripen here, the Mars grapes, which come out great because my vine is certainly a lot more mature. And then I've never really ripened high quality plums here. So for all intents and purposes, this is just the most beautiful piece of fruit I think I've ever ripened. And I do believe this is the most beautiful fig variety I've ever ripened, I've ever observed. Um, it's not even really that close. There are some other varieties like uh, Juwali Noir, I think is quite beautiful. Suwadi historically has been very beautiful. Um, Fico Love. Um, there's a few varieties that typically have such an amazing, uh, even Neruccio de Elba is pretty beautiful and, and Vila de Bordeaux could be very beautiful. There's just certain varieties that have this amazing pigmentation to them. Um, and even if I were to touch the fruit on the inside, it would pretty much, or get this, actually if I touch the skin and get this a little bit of the skin, some of that rubs off on your hand and it creates the most amazing pigmentation. You just can't find that anywhere else in figs. Um, so here's an example right here, just getting right on the inside of the skin stains my finger. There are other varieties that do that, like Neruccio de Elba, as I said, and some Violet de Bordeaux can do that, I think, but Again, this is just, so, it's just such, it's on such another level that it's just, uh, yeah, it, it's mind blowing. I had one yesterday that looked just like this, but not as well ripened. And it, to, me, to me, it tasted like a blackberry. I mean, I felt like I was eating a blackberry. So let me eat this now and see 
Because, you know, a lot of times, it's just because it looks so nice and um, the colors are so amazing, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to taste good. It doesn't always line up, but this fruit, it seems like it does. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Wow. Very thick, very dense. The flavor is quite an explosion in your mouth. Oh, my God. Wow. You know, it doesn't really taste like a blackberry today. As much as I was getting uh, a few days ago. But that is just mind-blowingly good. It's definitely one of the better figs I've ever eaten. Um, I would say that's probably like a... Uh, It's at least a 4.7 out of 5. I think I really would have to sit down and think about it to really just give it the most perfect, accurate rating um, in terms of flavor. But that's one of the best tasting figs I've eaten. It's one of the most beautiful figs. It is the most beautiful fig I've ever ripened. The fig also just performs so well here, being related to Celeste, observing it in the, the rain that we had, We've had a lot of rain recently, guys, and a lot of these figs just are not doing so great. Uh, we had a period of about three days of rain, and pretty much anything that was ripening during that period didn't make it. Um, this has somehow avoided most of that intense damage and has still ripened really well. I was either able to pick them before those rains, um, after the rains, and the fruits that ripen after the rains, I mean, that's really the critical thing there is, because nothing's really gonna get through that, that monsoon, right? Um, but if you can have fruits that are on the tree that maybe are not at the point where they could be totally damaged by that rain, but they're at a state in which they could at least uh, avoid all of that and come out of that rain on the other side as if really nothing had sort of happened and that's what I'm seeing with this variety and a few other varieties here and there but uh, there's nothing like that I think I mean that's what Celeste does it just is a champ in this rain it just sheds the water and you know what the skin doesn't absorb the water I've noticed the skin on these fruits is so there's something about it that's just so perfect and conducive to this that the fruit just continues to be beautiful. It doesn't even matter, guys, if it rains. The fruits just continue to be beautiful. They don't change. They're basically blemish-free. I mean, there's no sugar spots. <clears throat> this, is this is easily, easily in one of the best figs I grow. And we did a top eight list um, last year. We did that on our blog. You can check it out on figboss.com. You see that top eight varieties I grow and in, um, this is one that is in that top eight easily. I don't know where to put it exactly just yet, but I don't know. I feel, cause I don't, I feel quite excited about it right now and I don't want to give it a rating based on partly this excitement, but uh, this will be in my top 10 for sure by the end of this season when we do a similar blog post um, talking about my absolute best figs so this is a tier a top tier fig that you can grow in a humid climate and i would just highly recommend it for anywhere um try it out you know you're going to get that similar pigmentation you know or this reminds me of actually is pastelier it reminds me a lot of pastelier so pastelier is just one of the best figs period um even flavor wise this kind of reminds me of pastelier and there's even an unknown pastelier up in um California, up in California, out west, where it produces the most intensely varied flavored fruit when pollinated that's pretty similar to a pastelier. I mean, there's some pretty good evidence that says they might be the same um, as, you know, a regular strain of pastelier. But anyway, the, the point is, though, is that this fruit reminds me of that a lot. And I would highly, highly, highly recommend that anybody in California tries this out grows this fruit over there because uh, you might just be maybe not have the same intensity of that berry flavor but it 
it's going to be similarly impressive and you don't need the pollination, I think. Uh, you definitely don't need the pollination, but I think it is going to be on a similar level of quality to that piece of fruit. It does rival Pastelier here for sure. And that's probably also one of my most beautiful fruits. It's so blue. And uh, anyway, guys, I don't know. That's just Black Celeste. I thought I'd talk about it. We will have some cuttings for sale. I don't even, I may even have some trees available right now, but it's pretty unlikely, I think, that I sell much from this because I'd like to plant more of these in the ground um, before I start selling the trees themselves. But we're going to sell some cuttings, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. We'll see you guys soon, all right? I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that you guys get a fig like that someday. I really do. I'm going to enjoy these grapes. We'll see you guys for the next one. Take care.